guys, it's Roxy here and today I've got the beautiful Goshta on the call and bringing her to our channel to share with you all about her and her role in the Great Awakening here on this planet. Um, she channels through um, messages from the Palladians and a galactic ship um, and she's also got a channel Cosmic Agency as well. So welcome Gosha. Welcome, thank you very much for inviting me. Hello to all the Australians and Brisbane. I love Brisbane because I lived there as we talked um, about before the recording. Yeah. So hello everybody in Brisbane. Yes, yeah, thank you so much for all the hard work that you do, all of those messages and bringing it to the public eye on the global uh, stage. It's so incredible all the work that you do. So thank you so, so much for that. Um, we wanted to share with everyone how the heck you got into all of this. How can you walk us through your awakening and like how you've come to channel Palladian beings through the process that you do? Yes. Well, uh, let me maybe, yes, do some kind of a presentation here first. First, let's clarify that I don't channel. That's that's actually very important. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's a controversial method, the way we speak to them. Uh, which I will get into a little bit later. Um, channeling is a, is a real phenomenon, and we don't discredit it. It's actually uh, it's, it's it's actually something that is very real. However, the the group that we talk to uh, has um, has decided to to abandon that method of communicating um, with the people on Earth because, as they tell us, it's a bit unreliable in certain cases mm -hmm. because it sometimes gets mixed up with your own ideas and your own you know, mental environment. So people might project some of their own interpretations into the message. So, uh, so the Tigetan Pleiadian group, another important point, they call themselves Tigetan Pleiadians because in Pleiades, there are so many different races and, um, and people, if they communicate with them, they communicate with different groups. And sometimes they have even different ideas about things and different philosophies. So. Uh, all of the baseline is usually the same. So the ones that we talk to is, is they call themselves Taigetan because they are from the star system Taigeta, where there are four planets. Uh, most of them come from the planet Erra and Temer. And I'm at this point I will interject. This is the same race that communicated with Billy Mayer. So right. I'm actually here confirming the case of of Billy Mayer. Uh, yeah. I'm confirming the beginnings of his contact because later on he lost the contact and the, the, the information got distorted a little bit. I'm not going to go into that right now, but I just wanted to make that clear. But it's the same race that communicated with, Bill, with, with Billy Mayer. They are physical people. Uh, they are in so-called so -called fifth density. I could go into that as well, why I'm calling it so-called. Um, uh, but they are physical people, biological people, they are not angels, they are not, you know, globes of light, they are not light beings, those light beings do exist, mm -hmm. also, of course, because, you know, it continues all the way up to the source, and different types of intelligences and beings reside in all these different levels, but the group I'm talking to, they are physical people, biological people, looking just like us there are differences maybe inside well not maybe that there are there are <laughs> differences inside and um, here and there it's all explained in our videos where i share their information it's called cosmic agency on on youtube where i have over 300 videos right now sharing what they share now let's go to the method Yes. The, the, the way we communicate is actually through the internet and i know this is a novel idea and something something weird it may sound weird to the people how do i know who they are etc well four years ago when the, all this started in 2017 we were introduced to them by another person who were in communication with them and at that time uh, there were a lot of people in communication with them through the internet because they they at that time had that program going on of contacting people in mass on earth and why internet? As I said in the beginning, because they, 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 they decided to go for the method that is more reliable in the communication where they can transmit and transfer the l large loads of information exactly word by word with no distortions. Mm -hmm. And if you see, 
in my channel, the information is so technical sometimes. It's no way that I could channel that myself. Yeah. And, you know, because I don't understand these concepts. So the way we communicate is through writing live. It's in a chat. And we have informal and formal conversations um, where they share all this information on all sorts of topics, science, technology, spirituality, metaphysics, awakening, uh, navigation, genetics, uh, they explain how their society works, exopolitics, federation, how that works with relation to Earth. So there's just so much and it keeps flowing every single day. Since 2017, let me just go back to that for a moment. Yeah. So since 2017, we have been in communication with them daily, almost daily, uh, with almost no breaks, uh, with, uh, with several of them on the ship. That's right, because they are located in the orbit of the Earth. Yeah. Um, yeah on a plane on a plane on a ship called Toleka the first girl we talked to was Zvarov Erra she's no longer with us anymore but we we have continued to talk to others and and the, they are mainly women even though men also uh, talk to us a few times there are several pilots on board who explained different different areas of of their life um so since 2017 17 till now, we are in ongoing communication. They never asked us to share this, by the way, which I believe is very important because this, this shows, this is one of the reasons why, where it shows they don't have any agenda. We mm. started this as friends. This was a very informal conversation. They talked to many people and um, it was us who actually went nuts about sharing all this and offered them to share this but they never came approaching us. They never asked us, hey, could you go and do it, put this out and say this to the people? Never, it was actually quite doubtful for them in the beginning if this is a good idea because they believe there's so much information already out there that Zvaru Perra, that first girl, she was confused. She didn't know if it's a good idea to be putting more information for the people at this point. But I, talking to her, I made her understand that I think it's a, it is a good idea that people need to undo so many of lies that we have been fed throughout millennia. And that's what, been, that's what we have been doing since then. I could go on. So you have to um, ask me maybe something if, if you would like. Yeah, so when you started, did you get a download to go to a computer program or like what was, where, what app, where are you communicating on the computer and what led you to that, to doing that? It was because of, we were introduced to them uh, by the, by the lady who had the communication with them at yep. the time. So we had a meeting in one of the softwares, it was one of the programs for example, like old Hotmail, MSN chat, for example, one of those. I cannot now tell exactly which program we are, we, are, we are using because we're not really authorized by them for the security, but it's one of those programs, the chat, you know, like Skype, MSN, yep. just normal program. Yep. So we had an hour, we had an hour prepared uh, midnight on Tuesday. So that lady was there in the conversation in the beginning, uh, human lady on earth here the lady who introduced me to them and and that's how it started and we since then we had meetings every day every day at two o'clock p.m or whatever she would she would come online and we would come online and we do have explanation on in our channel how it is they connect to our internet servers uh, because that's one of the questions too that that, that comes up all the time well they've just i, I, I do have to mention yeah, yeah. I'm just going to say they've got such advanced technology, like we have no idea the capabilities of this frequency, yes. right? So, yeah, yeah. But that, that's a very important point because many people would say, yeah, they have this advanced technology. Why do they use Internet? Not because they need it. We need it. They do this yeah. for us. And, and it's also because I always say this in every interview. It's also, also because there is a regulation out there in space uh, in, in prime directive, which is real. Mm -hmm. that states that any uh, extraterrestrial civilization cannot communicate with a developing civilization through through the methods that are more advanced to that civilization than what they already have. Yeah, That's why Federation rules and all that, because Tegetans yeah. belong to the Federation, they, 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 they cannot go beyond that rule. So they, communic so they communicate through the method that is available currently to our, uh, to our 
population. Before we didn't have internet, so they were relying more on 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 internet. Sorry, they were relying I'm more channeling. on channeling, yeah. on channeling, for example, telepath, telepathy, etc. But as they are explaining to us, there is such a thick uh, matrix 3D electromagnetic uh, mud surrounding the Earth that it's not always easy for them to send a clear message uh, to the people. So mm. that's why they are very happy now with this method because the, the information gets, gets in, it gets through undistorted. And what I present in the, in the videos is exact word by word mm. what was said. I don't change anything. I don't, I don't, I don't um, input, in, impose my own interpretations on, on that. Yeah, beautiful. So were you amazed when you were like getting messages back for the first time? Were you just thinking this was unreal, like so profound? Yes, I was I was super excited because all my life, well, not, not all my life, I'm lying. Half of my life, I have been, <laughs> I have been like desiring the extraterrestrial contact. And mm. I have been asking for years, like, please, I want to be used in some way. I feel like I want to do something for the, for mm. the world. And I don't know how, and I feel I want to be used, using me some, somehow. Even though when I say it to them, they are like, no, no, we're not using you. You know, that's the wrong choice of words. And, uh, but I did, I, I did put out, I, I, I was putting out that thought, you know, in the universe for years before this contact started, mm -hmm. that I want to somehow contribute and do something. And I want to talk to them directly. I was yeah. never interested in, a, in the lights in the sky, for example. Many people are, but I, I never cared. I still don't. And I cared about what they have to say and who they are and why they are here. So if your audience wants to know who they are and why they are here yeah. and what they have to say, yes. uh, they Keep should use my channel Cosmic Agency because it's all there. And so, yeah, so I was super amazed when I first started talking to her. I couldn't believe that right now, like right now, I'm sitting on my couch on my computer and there is a, someone in an orbit on the extraterrestrial ship communicating with me like me like how did that happen this is unbelievable it is so, unbelievable yeah. it's pretty out it's pretty crazy isn't it really so you were on an awakening journey at that point and then this kind of came into synchronicity when you met the person that handed over yes. kind of this transaction yes 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 i was um i don't know if i if i would call that i was on awakening i was one well, yeah i guess in some yeah i was very interested in all these subjects i was studying i was reading books i was going to conferences i was um, meditating i was like i said i was putting out these messages out there to the universe please contact me somehow but no ship in the sky i didn't want to see the ship in the sky i want to talk to them like who are you guys yeah so uh, so yeah. yeah so when you are uh, like do they come in every day are you typing every day do you go okay 12 o'clock today we're on like a meeting like we would what like we set up this call we said okay this time and we'll jump on the call is that how it works yeah it varies throughout because it's almost like it, 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 we are now in the fifth year so mm -hmm. it depends um it depends on what person and it depends in the beginning yes we did had we did have specific hours now we don't have specific hours. Uh, I'm just online all the time when I am available uh, on green, so to speak. And then the, she would come like right now, the main contact is uh, Athena Zvaru and also Yashi Zvaru. <laughs> it's a long, it's another story to explain all, all these personalities. Yeah. But uh, they they come in, they, they come online without specific hours uh, now. It's mm -hmm. usually in the afternoon or at night when, when both sides are available. Right. We don't have specific hours anymore, no. So can you tell us a little bit about the person that you're mainly dealing with? What density? She's in fifth uh, density and mm -hmm. um, probably vibrating in different levels, obviously, like we always are moving. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, where she comes from the Targeta uh, planet in the solar system over there. Um, can you tell us a bit about her personality and, you know, what she's like to deal with? Is she cheeky, funny? Is it that fun <laughs> kind of relationship that you've got with her? Well, I, I don't know who to mention uh, first, actually, because, well, in the beginning, we talked to Zvaru of Erra in the first two years, and she was from Taigeta. Yes, she was Taigetan. And uh, we also talked to Anneka, Anneka of Temer, yeah. who is also Taigetan. Uh, she has been the one that is more con um, consistent in this communication, that she has been with us since the beginning. Mm -hmm. And then in 2019, other character appeared, and her name is Yaski Zvaru. But I don't even, I'm not going to even go into explaining who she is exactly and how she got into the picture because it's actually so 
so profound and so metaphysical and complicated. Let me just say this. Okay, let me just put it this way. Yeah. Uh, you know, in, in the so-called fifth density, but not only in fifth density, here as well, it's just that we don't know it. We are very locked into the linear sequential uh, state, oh, of, state of reality. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah exactly. But it, it, it happens here too, we just, we're not aware of it. We might be like, for example, in front of um, an, another us from another future or past or timeline, are we just not aware of it? So we perceive it as another person. Mm -hmm. But up there, they are more aware of this no time and no past and future uh, reality and especially because they are also time travelers that's totally different to topic yeah. and we have time travel explained <laughs> in our channel if you want to know how this works yeah, yeah. so the main girls varu Vera, she's a time traveler she's also the one who um that's also complicated to explain she also um she also gives birth when she gives birth she gives birth to another version of herself, I, I could say. This is not a normal way things work in Taigeta. Okay, she's like a different type of a being within even Taigetan society. So Zvaru Ferra, we call her Zvaru 9. And then she gives birth to Zvaru 10. Ah, what we call Zvaru, yeah. Zvaru 11. And then Yaski is Zvaru 12. So in, it... it yeah. We have the explanation in our channel, if anybody's yeah, interested, yeah. but it's kind of complicated. So there are different versions, you could say, different models, you would say, uh, of, of the same person, but incarnating in different, in different points of their soul progression and coming together. Yeah. Because beautiful. there is no time. And especially when you have a technology of time travel, you can meet yourself from the future. You can yeah. meet your, your future version of yourself. So, um, so right now we are talking to Athena Zvaru and Yaski Zvaru, who are actually, they are the same soul, oversoul, the same consciousness, yeah. they represent the same oversoul consciousness, but they are different people coming from different points of that soul's progression. So and they are in the same place. Right. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so yeah. we, we talk to both of them and they are both different. Um, so their personality is different, but you can feel that there is the same sort of energy and, and consciousness operating, operating mm -hmm. through them. Uh, but now, okay, going back to the personalities, I don't want to complicate it too much at this point and confuse yeah. your viewers. Let's go back a little bit to the, to It's practice. almost like your, you know, your child self is going to be different to your yes. adult self, right? Exactly. So it's just a trends, it's an elevation of your consciousness and your development of your, of your journey. Yeah. Yes, no, precisely. That's another point of looking at this. And they actually told us that example as well, that yeah. you could imagine that there is a 20 year old self and that there is 50 year old self yeah. and they come to the same point talking to each other. Be a lot wiser. <laughs> yes. So, so, um, so yes, he's Varu, the one we talked to, she has been here since 2019. She's actually a girl. She's a young girl, which is, who is around nine years old biologically, but inside she's an ancient soul that in that encompasses many, many beings. Mm -hmm. um, and she, she's very cheeky. She's very, she's very, she can be very silly. She likes to play jokes and laugh and very extroverted and she loves to play, but she's very, 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 in, very, very knowledgeable and wise on many topics. So when we talk to her, you know, we don't see the child. We only see typing, what she types. So we see all these wise things coming out of her but as other members of the crew tell us, do not lose out of sight the fact that she is a child. Because sometimes <laughs> it's easy for us to get wrapped up in her wisdom, which sounds so adult. But then, you know, she's a child. And then Athena Zvaru, uh, which is like, uh, oh, <laughs> she, she's, she's, she's an adult. She's around 19 years old. Hmm. Uh, they are all very young, by the way. Yes, on the I, I've seen your pictures. They look very young. We might even put some, yes. put some up into this video yeah. so people can um, kind of understand where we're going with this. With their because they did look very young, but it's yes. the energy and there's intelligence in their soul that's coming through. 
Yes, exactly. So she's around 19 and she's very, very calm. Uh, she's also very wise and very knowledgeable. She's a pilot, actually. So ah. she goes flying on the flying missions around the Earth, on ki all kinds of operations all the time. And she, she tells us what she saw. Yeah. And um, she's also a time traveler. Like I said, time traveling, that's a totally another subject. Let's not yeah. go into that now. <laughs> so, um, so Athena Svaru is the one in charge now uh, of this contact. But let's go back to, the, to what you were saying Athena, about them yeah. being young. Because this is not something that defines their their, their society. Let, let, the, there, are, there are older people in Taigeta. It's just that it's young and idealistic Taigetans who come here trying to help and be active because, you know, for adventure and because they are involved with Earth for many, 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 many for many years, for millennia. So a, a lot of Taigetans who are, most of Taigetans who are back home, they don't get involved uh, anymore. They don't get involved in conflict, in saving and you know helping other civilizations. They are kind of transcended that and transcended that dualistic form of being. Mm. Um, it's it's those young Taigetans who are still in the fight and they want to be in the fight and they want to help and contribute. Um, it's kind of like going, you know, you you graduate school and you want to go backpacking, and you want to go traveling, yeah. and you know that you that urge, that passion to go and see things and experience different yes. things, right? So yeah, yes. I can understand. So that's, yeah. that's what motivates a lot of these young Taigeta uh, crew members to come here, because I must say there's not much happening in Taigeta. <laughs> it's a very peaceful place, yeah. Yeah. very harmonious, and there's not much going on. There's not much conflict. And sometimes mm -hmm. the souls, especially young souls, feel they, they need that. They mm. need a little bit of a challenge to grow, to, you know, to, to put their character to work mm. and, to, um, and to, be, to be something else than just you know, sit on the beach and, and enjoy the sunset, which yeah. that's what they do in, in yeah. Taigeta. And some of these um, are po possibly your soul family and star family as well that they're connecting in to help the collective consciousness at this time, right? So that's the reason for the for that heart to come and be of service, right? No, exactly. That's exactly that's uh, that's exactly what's happening as well because there are many reasons why they come. But one of the reasons is is that that that, that you mentioned, if I understood you right, that there they have the the soul the the, the soul link with um with what's happening on earth and with many um many human star seeds and human beings their lives are intertwined with us mm -hmm. and they always explain to us actually the line between what is extraterrestrial and what is a human is very thin mm -hmm. uh, there are all kinds of variants of extraterrestrial souls walking on earth through star seeds incarnating from source through so-called immersion programs which is they have their body in in there on the on their ships or in their planet and they project their consciousness into the human avatar and you think you are a human walking and observing life as a human but actually your your 5d body is somewhere up there that's the way they come in as well and then there are step downs step downs which is a real step extraterrestrial full extraterrestrial with memory and all stepping down from the ship and mingling and living among the humans yeah. We met one of them also. That I must say that. Oh, because, share, please. We would all love yeah, to hear people, that story. Yes. I always forget to say that it's important because people I always say we communicate through writing, but we also met one of them physically. Yeah. And we also had audio with them a few times. They talked. Wow. Like on the you, on a you, phone call or a Zoom call or something like that. It was like a call. It was like yeah. a like a connection through through audio, yes. But the one that we met physically. But we, we cannot say a lot about it because it's a girl, because she's here on anonymous type yeah. of operation, which actually most of these step downs are. There are so I love that many step down. I've never heard of that before, the term step down. I like that. That's um, what they are, are they coming off this um, ship that uh, yeah. uh, Athena is on? Is it the same um, ship? It, it, well, I'm just now talking about all extraterrestrials, not okay. even Taigetans. Just There's an invasion of step downs right now. Okay, yeah, yeah. Perfect. Invasion, that's the wrong word because it sounds so negative. I just mean <laughs> there are so many step downs walking on Earth right now. I'm not just referring now here to Taigetans, I'm referring to all extraterrestrials. Yeah. They have the representatives on Earth walking among us. So, um, so, so the one that you met? Yes, the girl. We met her, I don't know, a few years ago. Um, 
the thing is that we didn't know who she was at the at the time and she didn't tell us and it was like a secret and we knew only a year later from the team they finally told us because i could sense something that, that something is is wrong i mean wrong in a sense that she's not who she's telling us she is and i was getting angry i was getting frustrated because i felt a little bit like i'm played like some mm -hmm. kind of a game happening like this is not they're not being transparent here with this situation and you know they were like maybe yeah. yes maybe yes you know ah, mm, mm, like, like <laughs> so you know pl playing jokes with us like for example um Tell her that she left her room, her, her room in disorder. We're not cleaning it up. Like things like that. Uh, like I, so I was saying, what do you mean? So she is one of them? We didn't say that. So it was such a mind game to me. So, but it, it I was- I wonder if it was like, obviously for the pro, for the protection of the being and yes, the yes. whole thing, but also triggering you to help you be more patient, you know? Yes patient and also they wanted me to feel with my own soul yeah. and heart what she is like it, they always tell us people are always waiting for these ready answers like tell us yes or no this and that you know um and even her herself was 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 was, was telling me you know what what do you think what do you feel what mm. do you feel i am mm. <laughs> and um and i i could feel that she's something else she was she was something different yeah you know and Finally, they admitted because I was getting angry and they didn't, didn't want to see me angry. Uh, so they were like, okay, listen, we have to solve the situation because Gosha is getting a bit um, disturbed here with this, not knowing, because I don't like not to know. I don't like games, you know? So- yes. um, Well, you've won the truth, right? You've had an, a lot of, we've ha all had a lot of games and illusions yes. on the planet. So we just want the truth now, right? Yeah. Yeah. But it was to protect her because she, like yeah. I'm saying, it was, she's on an anonymous, sort of operation and um and she didn't want to you know she, she wanted to to be viewed as a human as most of these step downs do mm. they they just they don't they don't want to be seen as extraterrestrials mm. so did she look so that, like did she look like your age like where did you meet her did did you no, much younger she's she looked about 20 years old mm. and we uh we met and now, if I say well, we met, maybe I'll reveal too many details. Okay. Before we put two and two together, but we, we met somewhere in Europe. Okay, perfect. <laughs> in, in Australia, it yeah. was Europe, and um, we met. She was, uh, yeah, very young, uh, tall, and uh, very, very friendly. But what struck me about her was that she looked very um, modern. You know, like we had this idea, and this is what I want to say. Too. we had this idea that you know the spiritual people uh, they they are gonna look a certain way mm. right they're gonna like full of crystals or like hippie yeah. look and poor <laughs> and yeah no makeup and things like that and Ready, she was like, no yeah. shoes <laughs> yes. yeah but yeah. she was nothing like that. She was so well put together. She was actually very elegant. She mm. was wearing makeup. Her hair was like, she looked like a model, you know? Mm. Um, modest, but still very elegant. And then when she was speaking, she was speaking about all these highly advanced spiritual con uh, spiritual concepts and, and, and things. So that was like clashing in the mind of our programmed selves that we just perceive you either have to be spiritual and you know looking raggy or you know or or she's some sort of a valley girl she looks she look a little bit like a valley girl you know yeah. but she was combining that uh, both worlds in in one mm. and that's how they are you know they don't actually reject any part of life as as something you shouldn't be they just embrace it all they are very like they say holographic but now we we say holistic which just means that you just embrace all of yourself and you yeah. don't need to reject any part of anything mm -hmm. and they are into science but they are highly spiritual because it's actually the same yeah they don't yeah. buy that that's we always categorize everything into that you know dualistic mode of viewing reality but they they embrace it all they integrate all aspects of life yeah and so you just randomly met her and started talking to her and a year later you figured out she was actually a Palladian sent and she's doing anchoring light and doing her own mission herself here on the planet. Yeah. How long is she, has she been here for? 
I don't know. That I seriously do not know because I don't know when she first came uh, to Earth. I think she's still on Earth. Yeah. Some of these extraterrestrials, they, they stay here for a long time. Some of them cannot be of, because the frequencies on Earth affect them negatively. There's a lot of toxicity and the food. They have problem with our food. Mm. Uh, they have a special uh, like a device in their belt for what they told us that keeps them in a higher frequency. Uh, but, and, and some of them cannot stay here longer than for two weeks. They have to come, come and go. But some of them, like her, for example, seem to be tougher and stronger and they can stay here uh, more. Um, yeah, because so, the yeah. frequency, the more you elevate, the, the more intense the energy becomes in public places. Like we've all been noticing yes. that as well, you know, going to the grocery store and feeling that and feeling this and it's like, whoa, get, get home, you know. But um, so is yeah. she is she did she share your her supernatural gifts like um to be able to you know dissolve and transcend back up to the ship um through stargates or portals or no 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 she was very secretive I, like like i told you she we didn't know until one year later who she was yeah. so she was you know sticking to her role as a human all this time uh, but she did she was showing us that her ability like you said of sensing uh, where there's negative you know astral or whatever and energies and entities that are not so positive we were in various cities uh we, because we, we met her in two different cities in europe and she was telling us that she doesn't feel good in that specific area mm -hmm. or when you leave or like if something is not not right for her because she was sensing so much uh, negativity mm. because there is there isn't much of that in back home for them you know they live in a very harmonious society and some of these negative uh, thought forms and energies here affect them mm. very deeply and very mm. um, negatively to the point of them getting sick because they are mm. more energy based mm. even though they are physical the stuff affects them faster in a way and they are not so immune to stress like like we are mm. we are we are a bit tougher here because that's where we are born and we are immersed in this all our lives mm. but then then they come in here and being affected by what's happening on earth or walking earth uh, it's it clashes with them and 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 now and i think where she is if she is still on earth i'm not sure i think it would not be a big city i think she would be living no. somewhere in a natural environment yeah i sense that yeah I, and it does it feels better the cities are hard like you know everyone's moving out of the cities at the moment because if you're awakening and elevating you're feeling those frequencies you know those old false beliefs and old uh, negative energy flows that are you know in those cities so yeah so tell us about the ship that you're connecting with that they're all on what is up there what type of technologies how what do they kind of eat they're farming on the ships like what's where are they positioned can you share a little bit about all of that yeah well okay no one ever asked me that question uh yeah it's interesting i, I could I could also tell you a lot. Um, I will just stick to some basics. Yeah. Well, they are on a on this huge ship called Toleka. I think it's I don't remember because I am not very good with details like that. But I think it's two kilometers long, something like that. It's very big. Yeah. However, their crew is very small right now. Four years ago, there were thousands of them, but they were sent back, and now there are only like around thirty people on board on this huge wow. ship. Fun fact for the cat lovers, they love cats and they have a bunch of cats on board. And actually they told us that the cats were introduced from outside to earth. They are not uh, yeah. earth, uh, they are not um, terrestrial. Well, that's like the, feline, have... the feline beings, the Lyra feline yeah. beings, right? That was a creation back in the Vega star system in Lyra. Yeah, that's what they say. Actually, those, they're called Urma uh, beings, those feline beings. They actually claim that cats on Earth are their star seeds. Yes. <laughs> they're like, yeah, so it's interesting. Yeah. Um, myself, I am more into dogs. So I was, uh, I was quite disappointed that actually they don't have dogs in Targeta. Actually, they told us that dogs is a human in invention and creation mm. uh, yeah they have all kinds of canines mm -hmm. um, wild animals but they don't have them as pets usually but they have cats so they have cats on board they also have other animals they, they are animal lovers and they have uh, other types of animals that we don't have here they are called mogye they are sort of a bird a colorful bird bird-like creature that, that kind of wraps itself around your ne neck and they and they are there as well they have fish 
they have um, other animals, I'm not, I don't remember now, but mostly uh, cats. Um, the technology, yeah, it's very technological. They don't have, they, you know, they have been in a way stuck by their own volition on that ship for a long time. And it's very, very sterile. They, they complain about that a lot, you know, because they don't, they don't come out of that ship, even though it's, it's, it's big and has all the facilities, it's very technological. Uh, there is some green areas here and there, but and they I think they have some sort of agriculture area, small one, but not not much. So uh, so they don't have you know real air. They don't have access to nature. So sometimes you know they complain about that. Yeah. But they yeah. that's their decision to be here. And uh, but you know you don't have to. Whoever wants to go back, you go back. Um, yeah. So they have. Uh, they have all kinds of facilities. They have gym. The men love to work out. Uh, they are actually very big. Uh, you know, they are connected with the with the with the um, Scandinavian and Eastern Europe uh, in families here. So um, Tigetans and other Pleiadians called Engans are actually behind the Vikings. Yes. So, so they look very Viking-like. There was one of the Palladians that looks like a Viking, the one with brown hair. Does his name start with R? Was was it? R. Ragel? Yes. Was that it? Okay. Was that uh, him? Yes. He's quite yes. broad shoulders. Yes. I saw an image of him on your channel. Yeah. He's yes. very Viking-looking, isn't he? Yes. Well, from what we know, most of them look like that. They like to work out. They like to um, stay fit. All of them exercise. They are very healthy. Mm. Uh, you know, people ask why they are young and healthy and pretty looking. Because first of all, it was funny answer from one of them. Because we don't go to McDonald's. Yeah. Their, you know, food is very clean. They are actually um, vegan. But an important point here here is that they are vegan. Uh, well, Tigetans are 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 vegan. Zvarus actually, that's not a point. I will have to explain this. Zvarus <laughs> actually eat. Um, uh, synthetically created meat that comes from Urmas. The feline races eat synthetic meat, but it's not nothing like synthetic meat on earth. They mm -hmm. actually told us never to eat synthetic meat on earth. It's mm -hmm. different. They have a different technology, but they need some sort of an element from that. So Zvarus eat that um, from what I know, but Tigetans are completely vegan. But the variety of plants is so much more uh, wide, uh, so much wider than what we have here. Mm -hmm. they, they, they eat all sorts of algae. They have like different types of al algaes, algaes? Al algaes, algaes. Algae. Yes. Yeah. So uh, they, they, so yeah, the question was why are they healthy and young and pretty? Because they eat very well. Yeah. Uh, their food is not poisoned. Their environment is not poisoned. Um, it's there's no toxicity in their environment and they really take care of themselves mm. and they exercise a lot and also they have technology at some point when they get older not these on the ship right now but back home when they get older uh, they do have a medical pod technology which is a re re regeneration technology mm. where it basically regenerates all of you and rejuvenates you mm. so I think at some point they use that as well Mm, we've we've um, seen those pods on the ship that we're connecting with so i remote view up there my consciousness and there's the pod that you're talking about with plasma in it yeah so i've yeah. seen some so i was curious to see if there's any on the ship that they're going to and they're operating yes they have them and they use them if someone is very uh, sick like if, if someone is if someone needs to rege uh, regenerate something in their body but they don't like to use it very much because it kind of makes them takes them out of the action for a few months or a few weeks and they want to be awake so they try to resolve whatever they have with their mind first and with the right diet yeah um, and with you know, yeah processing whatever it like like do they yes. have the emotions as well because they're yes. through the third and fourth density into 5d so it's all about reflecting on that emotional the heart portal yeah. and i'm guessing that like for example that being that came down onto the planet for her mission if she got sick she would use that type of technology on the ship to rejuvenate and then be able to proceed on her mission is that kind of i right? think it's used in the more extreme cases like right. for example if there's an arm missing or yeah. you know you have something something more extreme other than that they try to you to apply like you said their uh, their own 
processing mechanism to to heal whatever it is you need to heal because that pod will only address like what's on the jet what's on the uh you know body mm. yeah on a body vehicle but mm. if you don't have that issue resolved mm. it might come back yes. so you need to source of the issue yeah you need to unplug the false belief and pull it out yes. of the weed from the garden bed yeah 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 beautiful yeah. so that's yeah. awesome so they're moving through that type of um ascension as well really because they probably see it like if they can help us that's being of service because once you get to like fourth density into 5d you're looking at how can you can be of service because you're in that frequency of realizing and being aware of everything in the divine and helping and being in like working with one another unity right so do they talk to you much about you know that unity and love and ascension um they do talk about it uh definitely uh in a way that uh as you go up in the density um, you see everything and the whole reality in a more unified way yeah. uh, so like i was telling you ab about the other versions of yourself other people being you here mm. we see everybody is separate from you a separate you and there as you go up in densities uh, so to speak um, then you 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 start to realize that other people are just reflections of yourself or are versions of yourself other versions of you and as you go up and up and up and up you understand that actually there is no one in the universe but just one person yeah. <laughs> we are all just know. one thing one person I know. So, crazy so hey. <laughs> that's what it, it's really complicated in their reality because this they know this and they see other people as themselves from the past from the future other versions other incarnations mm. um now for example um oh no maybe I'll, I'll skip that part but yeah you, you you could be talking for example uh to your other past incarnation yeah. uh as another person mm. and these things are a, a daily bread for them because they know mm. how the reality works so that unity that you're talking about the unity of being is more um is 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 clear is seen more clearly and experienced it's mm -hmm. not a some sort of a theory for them it's not something we are just discussing as a philosophical possibility like here on earth mm -hmm. but it's an experiential uh, reality for them yeah. and um yeah. and 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 yeah yeah I, I could go on in many directions yeah i know so, i know so well, let's go back to the ship when they're aboard the ship where are they sitting in orbit are they can they see our planet um like how close are they to the planet how close is the ship yeah it also changes sometimes they yeah. are lower like they, they 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 like to be more or less at 500 kilometers which is not much when you think about it 500 kilometers isn't is actually not much and no. if you have a big telescope you could even see them yeah. uh sometimes for security reasons they go up uh, uh so it changes but they are they are always on rotation it's not a stationary ship it actually mm -hmm. rotates and uh, they can see the earth the earth is not flat if anybody's asking by the way <laughs> uh, it's actually a toroid and they explain right. exactly why <laughs> yeah yeah we might get some people commenting going no you're wrong with us flat but that's okay they can have their own opinion <laughs> i know it's okay yes it's, yeah. it's okay but from our perspective and what they told us yeah and you know they see the earth they they know how it looks you know it's it's a toroid it's not totally round either it has like flattened areas on the poles mm. and it's everything is a toroid and they explained to us the toroidal concept and principle how everything including ourselves we are a toroidal field mm -hmm. so the same the same planets and um so, uh, yeah so uh, what was the question what so are they mean? are they are they planning on um looking at plans for uh physical contact in the future like a lot of people are talking about this have you got any insights on anything like of yeah. that? I, not officially, not as official contact. Uh, just remember also that there are other extraterrestrial races. I'm only speaking for Tigetans. Yes. Tigetans are part of the Federation, but there are other races that are not Federation. So they might have their own plans for yeah. the humanity. Yeah. And, you know, uh, I don't speak for them all. Uh, I only speak for this small group. And this group, uh, definitely, I think uh, they are. They would say they are, it's, the, the humanity is not ready for the official mm -hmm. physical contact. And I'm talking about the bulk. Like we could be ready, you know. So we were like, what do I mean? I am ready. And <laughs> yes, but 
mass, the mass of the population, you know, when you go to the street, you know, people that you deal with daily, are they really ready for the official physical contact? Uh, and it, it would also be viewed as invasive. And they are very, very careful about not being invasive. Mm -hmm. uh, the majority of people, they are so comfortable in their realities and in their I mean, 3D matrix um, lifestyle that mm -hmm. they would see them coming and physically introducing other concepts as invasive. Yeah. And that's actually endangering the status quo of what this reality is, which is that sort of limited mm -hmm. way of, of living, which actually is what the Federation kind of wants for the Earth. And with that statement, I'll, I'll, I'll go quiet now because this is a whole different to topic and controversial. Yeah. And also, you know, they they don't want to interrupt our free will. So a lot of us, like yeah. you and me, are like, yeah, bring it on. I'm ready for contact and ready for experiences and all of that. So from what I see, it's like individuals around the world that are looking to activate, elevate into that space. Um, it's a possibility. But yeah, a few. I think we're off a few years off yet until... Yes, so appearing in the sky. I mean, it's going to overwhelm too many people. We don't want to cause more chaos, right? <laughs> yes. And many ships are appearing all over the world and, and, and a lot. And they are confirming that to us that, you know, yeah. there are a lot of Federation drones and ships mm -hmm. uh, around around the Earth and not just Federation, but they're not officially yet um, and here. And like you said, if there's a there's a free will of the souls coming into this, th let's call it 3D reality to experience this. this yeah sort of limited existence and that's why it's also a pickle for them for the for, for, from the outside because they see also that bigger picture that the souls coming in here they want to have this experience mm. in a way mm. they want to have this experience for a variety of reasons they mm. want to have the challenge because as i said on their planets not much is going on in that in that sense mm. so some souls they want to have a little bit of a friction and th what better place to have some sort of a friction and limitation, if not on Earth, you know, yeah. to have that contrast to later go out and enjoy freedom. So, um, so coming in here in that way, invasively imposing their reality on those souls who want to have this experience, it's a dilemma. And there are yeah. a lot of these kinds of dilemmas for them. Yeah, yeah. Well, luckily, you're the ground crew and you can bring the messages in for the time being and get everyone skilled up on that you know potential because everyone needs to get their head around yes. the idea of it and that's through the expansion of your consciousness really when you elevate and work on yourself yeah yes. yeah so um what are some um is there any uh comments on the global structures from the crew at this time and any um any breaking news that we all could learn more about you know the cabal wars the, yeah. um, the breaking down of the old structures and you know, that new holistic world that we have to build as a civilization here on earth. Is there anything that you can share with that? They are always commenting on that as well. And they are always commenting on, on that, on a cabal's agendas and yeah. what stuff, even though they don't know exactly because no one knows exactly what the cabal is up to, mm -hmm. but they are definitely warning people a lot about uh, different, uh, different agendas happening. You know, we talked a lot for the last two years about the, about the um, how to say this without the censorship you know about the yeah. uh, about what, what do you have a cold word that you use for that i um, usually say on my channel but um you know the Aaron. injections <laughs> oh, okay so they they, they uh, we have a lot of videos on that when they were uh, warning people about about that and what this means for the population about the dangers mm. of it so most of it actually is, is censored on our channel. So we, we have it on our website only and on Odyssey channel, not on YouTube. So that's what they have been warning us about. Now, recently we have been a little, uh, talking a little bit about the war in Ukraine also in our channel. But um, yeah, it, it's, it's a complicated actually question for me to answer in like few sentences. Hmm. Um, uh, we, we do try to expose the cabal agendas as much as possible. Now I, I cannot specify any specific, any, anything, um, just one thing, but um, yeah, I am, and they are very interested in, uh, in helping people to understand how this global globalist network work in order to um, expose it as much as possible, as much as, as much as we can and, yeah. and try to liberate people from, from the lies 
Yeah, and it's going to just take time. You know, this is not going to yeah. birth overnight. It's going to be individuals having to wake up and we can just keep watering and planting the seeds, right? And just keep nurturing whoever comes to us and wanting is wanting and looking for that guidance, right? And, you know, finding yeah. this information. So, um, yeah. yeah, go ahead. Yeah. I'm just still thinking about what you said about the holistic thing um, is yes. that just recently we made those two videos about the holistic yes. society, yes. which is actually the base pattern of the society they are based on. Like all the societies, extraterrestrial societies in space, they have this system that they are called, be, before we used to call it holographic, now we call it holistic. Um, and and many people who follow us and uh, study this information, they, they would like to implement this, uh, this kind of society here on earth. So we were just giving information about that, how it would be possible to generate that model of the society on Earth, and um, and you know the, the the transition into that kind of society um, is not easy, but it is not possible totally at the at the at this point. But it's but it's possible to create some sort of transitional societies, and we talk about this in in our videos, and. Mm -hmm. It's a controversial subject, though, and you, when you read, when you see those videos, you understand why. Because yes, he's very explained that uh, for um, for both the, the the new world order agendas and for holistic societies, actually, uh, the removal of the current mentality mm. and the, and people mm. is actually quite quite necessary. Mm. Um, without it that holistic society will have no ground because there is too many condition uh, matrix people unawakened people, uh, hybrids, negatives, mm. all sorts of negative, e regressive extraterrestrials even on, on, on the planet, all mm. that would have to be removed uh, mm. in order to create the, that new uh, holistic uh, society in the future. And she's explaining the process of removing that, how, what would be necessary. Yeah. And for her, in the short, in summary, uh, the, the, what's essential to remove that is to regenerate hu uh, human mind and human consciousness because she believes that that's what sustains the toxic environment for those entities to thrive mm. and to continue to, to manipulate us. Mm. That's why it's so important to regenerate our own thinking and our own mind and, 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 and consciousness in order yeah. to stop creating those regressive egregores that abuse us and yeah. you know and make us fall into the vicious circles all over again on us depending on them then depending on us it, it's a complicated situation and it's not going to happen overnight like no. you said but um it's possible and that's what we're trying to to help to do it's just good to have that guidance from them about the holistic society and civilization that this is how you can implement it. Obviously, we're on track for the ascension. We're on track for globally elevating Pachamama, planet Earth, and us all individually coming back in and incarnating at this time to anchor the light and to bring the truths to the planet. It's all, We're all on track for what a mirror image of their planets and their civilization. So it's it's good for them to have their like input and in their insights to, to show us that we are going yeah. on the right kind of trajectory into fifth dimensional, like, yeah, the how to do it. But we're all figuring that out also as we go because you learn so much when we go in because it's like removing the veil and all of a sudden the answers are all there without looking outside of ourselves once again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... Yeah. Um, if there's any, because I know a lot of our viewers will be like, how can we talk to the Palladians? How can we talk to the Tagetans? How can we have this type of di dialogue? Is there any um, anything that you can share with, is it just intention to obviously get to this point where you're at to communicate with them? Or Because I know no, a lot of people will be like, oh, I want to do that. <laughs> yeah, I know. But more than four years ago when they started, I was on their side. And I just didn't understand why or why so many people seem to be talking to extraterrestrials and I'm not like, why can't I like what's happening? What's wrong with me? Like I want to. So I completely understand that desire and that and that and that passion. And um, I would just say, yeah, keep putting your intention out because that's that's what works for me. I seriously was every day, almost sometimes walking around the street in Barcelona where I lived. And I was like looking into the sky, like I want to be used in that sort of a positive way toward the upliftment of the humanity in some way, like do something, but not just work with something on earth. I wanted to work with the beings from outside. 
I had that so clear in my mind. So the intention, for sure, uh, uh, you know, show your show your uh, your 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 motivation that is pure and clean, mm -hmm. that is not for any self interests. Mm -hmm. And um, I am pretty sure that that impulse will be picked up by someone, maybe by your own race, uh, or by or by others. Also, remember that that communication can come through a variety of ways. Mm -hmm. I never in a million years would expect this type of communication. Like seriously, what? never um so it can come in so many ways even in your dreams in your astral travels depending on your like tendencies i for example i'm not psychic i don't channel i don't have any like paranormal abilities i have no visions i don't have astral travels that i am aware of so so this type of communication you know it went into my mode my personality um so you can meet someone physically have you eyes open because they are everywhere like seriously they are all around you yeah so have your eyes open and 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 also it depends on the prenatal contract i would say uh because in my case as they explained to me a little bit of my personal story it, it's not that it just happened randomly i actually had a sort of um sort of agreement to do this like a soul and, contract prior to coming into this body this yes. vessel yeah. Yes. Yes. And um, so it also depends on that. So don't be mm. too anxious if it doesn't seem to be happening mm. and trust in yourself and in, in the process, because there might be a reason why it's not happening. And it's OK, too. It doesn't it's not going to happen for everyone. Mm. You know, they, they for example, the Tigetans, they are very few, 30 people on board and they are unable technically to talk to everybody that they, mm. they want to talk to. And, and actually, right now, they are even in a stage where they are not accepting any new contacts. Mm -hmm. A few years ago, they were more open. And few, few, few years ago, like before, there were thousands of Tigetans and they, they had a specific mission to talk to people on, on Earth. Not anymore. Like That program is over. Mm -hmm. So Tigetans, they don't take on board any new contacts. But there are other races out there. Yeah. And there are also other dimensional beings. Uh, you know, not just physical beings, all, all sorts of creatures and intelligences. If the, the life is, the, the reality is full of beings. So you never know. And uh, like I'm saying, don't get too frustrated if it doesn't seem to be happening. Just be patient and uh, continue your uh, flow of life according yeah. to what you feel you should be doing. Yeah, that's so beautiful. Thank you so much for all of those beautiful little insights. We could keep talking, but I'm going to um, yes. honor our time and I'm sure we'll make, make another meeting so we can get more in depth because it's so good to hear it from you, your perspective. I mean, you're in the, the hot seat doing this work and it's really beautiful that you've come on and um, shared your story, shared your connection um, just to help serve and share with everyone what you're going through at the moment on, the, on your ascension. So thank you so, so much. We really appreciate you. Yeah. You're welcome. And thank, uh, thanks uh, for the invitation. And thank you, uh, everybody, for listening and for watching. And remember, Cosmic Agency, my, my channel, if you want to know more. Yeah. I'll tag it all below. Thank you. See ya. <laughs> thank you. Bye bye.